were the wise men of the nativity from China. This may come as a surprise, but this is not a new theory. It's possible this theory goes way back even to when Matthew recorded the wise men in his gospel. Hey guys, it's George Chuang. Now it is impossible for us to determine who the wise men actually were. We will only know for certain when Jesus comes back or when we go to heaven. But I bring this up because whoever they were, they were the first recorded people to actually worship Jesus. And if they are the first people to worship Jesus, then I believe God will eventually honor that people group for sending an envoy to worship Jesus and bring him gifts. God will surely pour out a great salvation on that people group for what they did for Jesus at his birth. Does God honor a people group because of what their ancestors did? Of course he does. Just consider Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Joseph, whose son Ephraim became the strongest tribe, or David, whose children will sit on the throne forever. And of course, the one who reigns forever and ever is Jesus, who's from the line of David. So God honors a people group because of what their ancestors did. And if their children respond to the Lord, then often an outpouring of God's Spirit follows. Other times, it's God pouring out His Spirit first, which caused the people to turn to the Lord. Now, when Jesus was born, no one was recorded as worshiping Him. Many praised God for the child, but no one worshipped him. Mary and Joseph did not worship him. When angels appeared to shepherds in the field, they went to see baby Jesus. After they had seen him, they went their way glorifying and praising God. But no one worshipped Jesus. Because in the mind of a Jew, you don't worship a man. And no one knew Jesus was God born in the flesh. Jesus is the word of God. When God speaks any words and creates, that is Jesus. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. We are not told to understand this mystery, but only believe. Now, when the wise men finally made it to see Jesus, he was already a small child under the age of two. I want you to pay attention to the words of the wise men. They asked Herod, Matthew 2, 2. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The purpose of their journey was to worship him. They want to worship him because he is divine and a man. This is an emperor, someone to be worshipped. And not just any emperor, no but one so divine that his birth is announced in the heavens. This is an emperor which you must pay homage to. It doesn't matter if the child is too young to remember you. Heaven is watching, so send representatives of your people to worship this divine child. He is worthy of a journey from the east That is so far that when they finally arrive, the baby is now a young child. Matthew 2, verse 8 and 9. And he, that's Herod, sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him. Also, when they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So when you see a nativity scene with the shepherds and wise men all together with baby Jesus, you know that's not true. By the time the wise men arrived, Jesus was already a young child, possibly two years old or under. Now Herod calculated the Lord's age according to the time determined by the wise men. If the announcement in the heavens was early, then Jesus is under two years old. How so? The star appears in the heavens, but Jesus is not born yet. 
The announcement is early. In this case, Jesus will be under two. If the star appears on time with Christ's birth, then Jesus is two years old. What if the star appeared late, meaning Jesus was already born, then the star appeared? Well, that's not too likely. That would mean heaven forgot to announce his coming, so the star appeared late. And if it's late, it really doesn't apply anymore. Anyone can run around and say, look, this appeared after I was born, or one year after I was born, or two years after I was born. The purpose of a sign is to foretell or announce. So the journey of the wise men took one to two years to get to Jesus. Many believe the wise men are from Babylon. Since they are wise men, they might have used Google Map for directions, in which they would know the journey is about 1,166 kilometers and would take 237 hours on foot. So if the wise men traveled on foot for one hour every day, then they would be in Jerusalem in 237 days, which is not even a year. But why would the wise men travel so slow at such an important birth? Well, maybe they were really old and couldn't walk for more than an hour a day. Couldn't they ride on mules or horses? Well, maybe their horses were really old too, so they couldn't go on for more than an hour a day. Perhaps they traveled for 30 minutes in the morning and then took a 6-hour coffee break. Then they traveled for another 30 minutes in the late afternoon and took another tea break and called it a day. But Balthazar, it's tea time! Melchior, do you know how embarrassing our rate of travel is? By the way, the Bible never said there were three wise men, and the Bible never gave their names. That story was made up much, much later. People started to assume there were three wise men only because three gifts were presented to Jesus. But chances are there were more than just three wise men. Now, I don't know why their journey took so long if they were coming from Babylon. Perhaps they spent half a year packing because they couldn't agree on what to eat and what to wear. So when they finally arrive, Herod realizes this newborn king is now a young child, possibly two years old or younger, if the star appeared before he was born. Now this is possible, but it sounds so unlikely and odd. Saying they are from Babylon creates all kinds of problems and raises all kinds of questions. However, if the wise men were coming from China, then things start making a whole lot more sense. And I've said at the beginning of the video that we may never know until Christ comes back. But if it's true, that would explain all the mysteries of the wise men. Matthew says they are from the East. Does Matthew not know where Babylon is? Of course he knows. Those in that time period all know the types of people in their region of the world. The New Testament names all kinds of people groups. But Matthew is only able to say, hey, these guys are from the east. That's all I can say. Where in the east, Matthew? Somewhere in the east. It's possible Matthew or God purposely wanted to obscure the ethnicity of the wise men. It's also possible Matthew just didn't know what to call them. So he simply says, these guys are from the east. That's all I know. Now, I said earlier that this theory is not new. There's an ancient document in the Vatican that dates to the 8th century. But the story may be from the 2nd and 3rd century. Brent Landau translated the document from Syriac to English and published it recently. The writer is unknown, but the story says the Magi are from the land of Shur. Shur is associated with silk production in other texts, so China is likely the place in mind. The text also says Shur is at the shore of the great ocean. 
The only great ocean when you keep going east is at China's coastline. Now, the capital of China during the birth of Christ was in Xi'an. The city used to be called Chang'an. I've been to Xi'an. It's where China's first emperor was buried and where the terracotta warriors are located. Xi'an is directly east of Jerusalem. If you look at a map, the two cities are almost on the same latitude. Jerusalem is at 31 degrees and Xi'an is at 34 degrees. All the wise men had to do was follow the star and travel directly west and they would reach Jerusalem. The Chinese were very advanced in astronomy at the time and Chinese astrologers recorded the appearance of a star in 5 BC. No one knows when Jesus was born, but many put the date between 5 BC and 2 BC. The star the Chinese recorded may be the star that appeared when Jesus was born. Now the Bible is clear that God was speaking to the wise men in dreams. So it's very possible the wise men were instructed to send an envoy to worship this newborn king. That's why the long journey was to be undertaken, despite it would take almost two years before they would be able to reach the newborn king. Now on a modern driving route, the journey from Xi'an to Jerusalem is approximately 8,441 kilometers or 5,245 miles. If you factor in the time to plan for such a long journey, assemble a proper team with the caravan, find translators for that part of the world, map out the major resupply points and trading cities, assemble the proper guards to protect from raiders, you can easily see how this journey can suddenly become a one to two year mission. Now the traditional story makes you to believe it was three old wise men traveling with expensive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. If that was the case, it would be more like three fools hoping not to get robbed. Let's hide these expensive gifts to present to a mighty king in bags of sackcloth so we don't get robbed. Highly unlikely. If it was simply three guys looking for a newborn king, I don't think that would be very troubling to Herod. He would simply blow them off. What was more likely was that the Chinese sent an entourage of men to accompany the wise men. Carts? Horses? Banners? Chariots? Armored guards? What is this? That's why when Herod saw them, he was troubled. There's a great company of men from a far off country, well funded, and their wise men embarked on this long journey to say a king has been born. His birth is announced in the heavens and they are here to worship him. You can bet Herod is going to be troubled. Matthew 2, 3. When Herod, the king, heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Those in Jerusalem likely saw this great entourage of men. And Herod was paranoid of someone taking his throne, so all Jerusalem was troubled with him. You can imagine those in Jerusalem talking. Where are these men from? Their faces are so different. They are from the east. Now the wise men traveled to Jerusalem and met with Herod because they were expecting Jesus to be born in a palace because he's a king. They probably had their gifts in beautiful chests that is suitable to be presented to a king. When they meet Herod, Herod is startled by this great company of men and call for the scribes and chief priests to ask where the Christ is to be born. And here's the sad part for the Jews. None of them accompany the wise men to see the Christ. How sad is that? They say he'll be born in Bethlehem. It is there you'll find him. And none of them go. None of them say, I need to go and see this. 
They were so rooted in religiosity and tradition, but no love for God. That is true sadness. Then the wise men head to Bethlehem, expecting to see another palace where they will look for the child. For they know a divine emperor should be living in a palace. They arrive, and to their shock, he's in a humble house. Matthew 2.11 And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I wonder if they fell down in sorrow with a broken heart to see this divine king who is worthy of our worship to be living in such humble conditions. But they are the first recorded people to come and worship Jesus. And I believe whoever these people are, God will surely visit them in the latter days. The story is likely to foreshadow a people group who will come from the east to worship Jesus. And if the wise men were indeed the Chinese, then that would explain the China prophecy in Isaiah that says they will come to the Lord. This is George Chuang teaching from Taiwan. If you would like to partner with me, you can give your support on Patreon and PayPal. Also, use the Amazon link below to shop on Amazon to support this work. May you be mightily blessed by the Lord. And until next time, let us continue to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.